wishing you a day full of happy thoughts good morning one and all i am satya soni from fifth form d from sri vishnu college of pharmacy sri vishnu college of pharmacy is the only recognized pharmaceutical research center under andhra university our faculty members received grant from aict csir dbt dst etc sri vishnu college of pharmacy is the first pharmacy college in andhra pradesh accredited by nac bangalore and our b pharm <laughs> program is nba accredited <laughs> now i call upon mr <laughs> anil kumar sahi coordinator of pharm d program <laughs> from <laughs> sri vishnu college of pharmacy to give a welcome note on today's session Dr. Kumar Nehmani, Principal Dr. Natraj Sir, and today's guest, Professor uh, Tiwari Sir, and all the participants. A warm welcome to all the participants who are in the session today. Uh, we are very honored to conduct a three-day seminar on translation of research to practice. So we are uh, fortunate to have Dr. Tiwari Sir today. So one of the stalwarts, stalwarts in our uh, pharmacy profession we have. Uh, we are very happy and uh, honored sir to have you in this session so i wish uh, all the participants will have a great learning experience and uh, you'll be much benefited through sir's lecture thank you Now I invite our respected director, sir, Dr. Kumar Nehmani, to address the session. Yeah. So good morning uh, to each one of you, and uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you all uh, for this uh, three-day webinar on translation of research to practice. Uh, we are conducting this series of webinars, and present seminar is being organized by Pharmacy Practice Department. Uh, on this note. Uh, Uh, as on behalf of the management staff students and volunteers i invite uh, each one of you for this webinar i must congratulate uh, each one of the volunteers as well as staff for organizing very nice session and selecting the wonderful topic uh, i think this reflects in terms of the registrations for this webinar so we have close to 800 uh, registrations uh, out of that 50% are uh, students and 50% faculty Uh, given this scenario i think this is a good number and this speaks about the uh, greatness of the speakers of the series of this webinar so i am pleased today uh, to see dr pithwari uh, who has been my mentor and um, we are fortunate to have a good mentor uh, coincidentally uh, both have same phd guide and and coming from same same institute also so um, i personally requested tevar sir to uh, come and uh, inaugural session to take in this webinar series he accepted it in spite of his busy schedules he is so kind and always supportive uh, and being a mentor it's also his responsibility i guess to support institute like ours uh, uh, his sessions are so interesting and exciting and he makes so simple and make uh, easy to understand and probably even to practice also by the students as well as the faculty and faculty so with this note i thank uh, dr tiwari for accepting our extent at uh, in a very short notice and making it possible and uh, pleased to see you and looking forward to talk so with this note i thank all the organizers once again uh, for making this possible and uh, hope that uh, all the participants make best use of this opportunity and learn from this uh, webinar series thank you thank you so much sir now i ask my friend hema to introduce our guest of honor to the gathering good morning everyone i am batina hema of fifth family i feel extremely elated to introduce today's guest of honor dr pramil tiwari 
Dr. Pramil Tiwari is a professor and head of pharmacy practice department at Naipur, Punjab. He pursued his degree in B-Pharmacy, M-Pharmacy in Pharmacology, along with Pharmaceutics, Advanced Pharmaceutical Analysis and PhD in Pharmacology from Benares Hindu University. Sir started his career on as a development scientist at Dabar Research Foundation. In the year 1997, Sir began his uh, academic journey as an assistant professor at Aman University and joined Naipur, SAS Nagar, Punjab in the year 2002. Became professor and head of pharmacy practice department in the year 2007. Uh, sir had guided 54 postgraduate thesis along with 30, 36 publications. Dr. Pramil Tiwari is honored with the Travel Grant Award for uh, young investigators from India with generous support from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Sir secured third prize for poster presentation and travel award for ISN to his doctoral scholar, Dr. Mr. Rajiv Ahlavat. Dr. Pramil Tiwari is an active member of uh, SPOR and is a faculty advisor for student chapter of ISPR, Naipur Mohali. Now I request Dr. Pramil Tiwari to take over the session. Good morning, everyone. I hope uh, you can hear me. Anil said you can confirm. Great. Very good morning, and uh, it's a special day today, not because uh, Shri Vishnu College of Pharmacy is organizing a three-day event. That's only one of the reasons. The other reason why I call it a special day is also not the fact that uh, results of elections conducted in the last couple of months are being declared. That's also not the reason. The reason why it is important is that today is World Kidney Day. And in this audience of pharmacy students, as uh, Kumar Sir said, and uh, younger teachers, I'm sure we all realize that for any human being, having a healthy kidney and a healthy liver. We all have studied it across our pharmacology classes. I will not be getting into the functions of kidney and functions of liver. I'm sure each one of you in the audience are sensitive to that. But then, uh, having worked in nephrology for some time, I had the opportunity to know CKD patients, their complications, their issues a little more closely than uh, some of my other colleagues who have chosen not to work in nephrology. Good morning, everyone. I will congratulate uh, Dr. Arnil, uh, Kumar sir, Principal sir, and the management to support this uh, three-day event. I was excited because every time Dr. Kumar speaks to me, he, in fact, puts me into an opportunity where I myself get to learn something. And uh, those of you who believe that you are going to get rocket science today possibly will be disappointed because I'm not going to talk about whatever is written in the books. Forgive me for that, Dr. Kumar. Uh, I'll be talking about something which is not written in the books, but that I have experienced and that I have gathered over 20 years of time at this place. And I think uh, the theme, translating research into practice, as a young researcher, the whole objective is publish a paper. Once we get a paper, the next level is publish it in a high impact factor. The third level possibly you attract a grant and I know of Dr. Kumar's achievement, so I don't have to get into that. Dr. Kumar, we will skip that. I'm aware of your accomplishments very well. What we do not realize in pharmacy schools, perhaps many of us, that research needs to be going into practice. And when I say practice, it is not pharmacy practice, it is clinical practice. Thank you so much, Dr. Anil Kumar, coordinator, sir, for uh, narrowing down on this intelligent topic. 
and it is from the pharmacotherapeutic perspective. Sorry, I'm not trying to break down, split out the title because when the flyer came from Dr. Kumar, I was wondering that uh, what exactly will fit and what will exactly benefit the participants and attendees of this webinar. I congratulate the Department of Pharmacy Practice, Sri Vishnu College of Pharmacy, and the entire team behind, invisible largely, to make it happen. Yes, to be the opening batsman is a big responsibility. And uh, I think after an hour, we will talk about it when we take questions. Uh, Dr. Kumar, with your permission, I will share my screen and uh, you could confirm if you are able to see that. Yes. Anil sir, can you see my yes. screen? Yes, we can see the slide and can you go to the presentation mode? Yeah, exactly. So because that is where that is where it sometimes goofs up. So yeah, this is exactly what I was talking uh, in the last couple of minutes. And uh, yes, I have chosen to talk about pharmacogenomics for pharmacy professionals. So when Dr. Kumar said that the audience would be comprised of. Uh, faculty members and uh, pharmacy students. I thought, let me talk about something which we, I at least have not studied in the college. And uh, it could be a sensitization for some of us. For some of us, it could be repetition. I should be excused if it sounds like repetition. And uh, I'm putting my thoughts and uh, everything that is available in the open domain but only one word of caution, the views that I express today, these are absolutely personal views and I respect, stand responsible to deliberate upon those views. You should not consider it is a view of Niper S.A.S. Naga. So let's be clear with that. Interesting. And uh, some of you are wondering why we have uh, this screen out here. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, when we want to go out and buy uh, shoes for ourselves, we believe that if it is an expensive thing, it's going to be a high quality product. As simple as that. I do not know, and that is what I'll try to answer in the discussion today. Does high value always mean better quality. I think that's where the entire discussion on uh, pharmacotherapy and uh, pharmacoeconomics should be revolving. It was interesting to dig out uh, these things because there were so many things are available on the open domain and from something which has become a sign of uh, family card. Dr. Anil, can you see my screen? Sir. Great. Sir. Yeah. yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, I want your attention on the left side where you see a picture of a Maruti Suzuki Alto car, which costs approximately four lakhs rupees at showroom. And on the extreme right hand side, you see a Rolls Royce SUV, which costs at least 6.95 crores. Now, all of them are cars, but then the capabilities are different. And if I had to take a choice, possibly my choice would be driven by the affordability. So if I have something like five lakhs rupees to spare, I will coolly put it on Maruti Suzuki Alto. The day I have as 60 lakhs rupees to put, I will possibly get it to a BMW. But that's something uh, subjective. I want your attention out there in the specifications. And it's so interesting. Technology has made uh, our lives, uh, I'm using the word simpler. From an 800cc engine in an Alto, I want your attention on a Rolls Royce, which almost has a seven liter engine, 12 cylinder. A three cylinder engine in a Maruti Suzuki Alto to a 12 cylinder. 
no doubt like me many of you would aspire and if you have a rolls royce or a mercedes benz or bmw you are blessed look at the power it generates a martha suzuki alto generates 47 bhp at 6000 rpm a rolls royce generates almost more than 10 times of that power and this is only a representative example so the point that i want to underline here is affordability is something and it is very hard to define what is affordability because i believe affordability is something that is dynamic i do not have all the money i go to the bank i take uh, a loan i buy a particular item and across the subject of health economics and health financing it is very hard to define what is affordability but yes it is a dynamic concept dr anil i will believe you can still see my screen okay sir. what i am going to be doing today is a quick four part thing and i would specifically want your attention on the last part where i will talk about some real time examples so i repeat do not expect a rocket science but let's run through this slide set and uh, yes given the online uh, scenario i think the solution lies here those of you and uh, in fact i can safely say all of you you are aware that in these five steps selection of drugs prescribing the preparing administering and monitoring five steps in the medication use system pharmacist is definitely involved at the level of monitoring at the level of preparing and dispensing and even at the level of procurement and selection of the drugs and that's a very fundamental point we all have been taught that that's something just to reiterate the point now demand for healthcare we assume that we will not fall sick we want to spend only when we are actually sick other than that we do not want to spend a single penny on our health and not surprising that many of us take our health for granted yes all the young boys and girls there you see uh, people like me who are bald and one morning when i was your age yes i never thought that i will lose hairs like this but the point here is illness is something which is random and we do not plan for getting sick the lighter side i will skip so therefore in view of this fact that the demand for healthcare is very random at the second point when we fall sick we go to a doctor and the choice of medication is not mine the choice of medication is someone else's and this is a really tough scenario it is a unique scenario in healthcare and i can say it's only now that i am seeing in the pharmacy schools health and healthcare is being discussed but 40 years back when i was in the pharmacy school i had learned all the subjects that most of you are learning today but a discussion on health or healthcare healthcare institution healthcare delivery was something which never happened no doubt if i say that pharmacists actually have no idea of what are the drug costs three things that i see on a strip of tablet and this morning while leaving for office i took a small picture and this was a strip somewhere lying down i look for manufacturing license number second thing i look for manufacturing date and expiry date a third thing i can safely say none of us look at is the mrp i will be open to discuss that so we go out we buy it from the over the counter and 
look at the fund we expect a discount on medication we do not expect a discount on a fruit juice we do not expect a discount on a lunch thing but when we buy medicines we expect a discount and rest all is no we will not get into that simple points i think for the students it must be interesting there are three points which are there on the slide the first one is price the second is cost the third one is value and over 20 years of time at this institution of higher education when i have been asking my young post graduates how do you want to spend your money when you get your when you get your first uh, salary and very logically they said sir i want to buy an iphone for myself which is perfectly okay between the price what you pay for an iphone and for the other phone whatever it could be i can see a differential of five times i am just placing if 10000 rupees for the other phone and 50000 rupees for an iphone whatever model it is but yes i know that when i buy an iphone spending 50000 rupees i am convinced that yes it is worth 50000 rupees and to put it differently yes they say that price is something which is objective the one that you pay the cost and value both of them are subjective so friends it's important for us before we talk about anything on economics or pharmacoeconomics i think we need to be clear what is price what is cost and what is value let's go further and see deeper into when we talk about cost in healthcare and this is where i say those of you who have learned pharmacoeconomics or who have studied pharmacoeconomics it could be repetition i will not get deeper beyond that there are indirect costs there are direct costs that you actually pay to someone and they could be classified as medical and non medical costs a third one that you can certainly not quantify is intangible cost someone who has a stomach ache will never be able to quantify the pain in terms of money not at all and that is what is the third component which is intangible cost nothing new those who have uh, studied it are certainly aware but those who have not i think for you it might be new yes how do we express the cost interesting last two years covid has kept our lives changed and i think in my personal thought last two years we have started valuing our life much more than what we valued until early 2020 i am aware that many of us have lost their near and dear ones i want your attention now when the vaccination program started yes my friends my families my neighborhood they said government should provide it for free and you are aware in this audience today that any single vaccine any single dose there is a cost many of us would have paid for it many of us would have got it free of cost but then you can express cost in at least these half a dozen different points cost per person when you plan for a lunch when you plan for a dinner when you plan for a party you calculate cost per person what is that which you are going to be paying and this is simple point which uh, people who will get into studying pharmacoeconomics will also get to know yes something that i said i did not study i want your attention on point number 3 and that is simply to say that the disease and the illness is absolutely unpredictable and therefore random and how to cover that uncertainty yes we buy a an insurance policy in case of a motor vehicle four wheeler two wheeler there is a compulsion to buy 
and insurance before you get onto the road. We take our health for granted. We believe, many of us, we believe we are going to be like that. And unfortunately, the first point is the only thing you realize when you are not well. You cannot trade it. You cannot exchange your pain with someone in the family or someone. No, you cannot do that. So I think two takeaways from here, the unpredictable nature and the lack of trading, lack of exchanging it with someone is something very important. Yes, some of uh, my clinician collaborators could believe that uh, I am pointing a finger. No, I had the privilege of working with some of the best clinicians in the country through the interface which this institution has with other hospital institutions. And I think that's a point we all need to know as pharmacy students or pharmacy teachers. Pick up any medicine book on the left hand for very first page, you open up the book, the very first page inside will have all the title thing. And the moment you open the left hand page, it says medicine is a dynamic subject. Yes, that very realization. And last week, when I was talking to my post graduates, I wanted them to remember a drug called Risserpine. I remember until 1985, this drug used to be there into the pharmacology books. And I would leave it for you to figure it out if it still is present in the pharmacology books because Risserpine has moved out. As pharmacology student, that's what I'm trying to underline, that our knowledge of diseases, our knowledge of efficacy of treatments, yes, it is actually not perfect. That means we keep evolving. And I think that is perfect to me, in my personal opinion, it, this is a perfectly acceptable scenario, absolutely fine scenario. Yes, I keep evolving. I keep learning, and I think that's where to go. Well, and very interesting part, and uh, I'm sure some of you are aware, in fact, many of you are aware of that. Dr. Anil Kumar, this graphic is something interesting, and this uh, in the books, it used to be five blind men and the elephant. Boys and girls, younger friends, I want your attention out here. You have half a dozen blind men, their eyes are covered. They are trying to feel an elephant. And if you look at the right hand side, the one who is holding the trunk believes that an elephant is like a snake. Contrary to that, the one who is holding the tail believes the elephant is like a rope. In between, I leave it for your imagination and for you to decipher. Now, this is something so classical. We look at it from our perspective. Yes, some of us, like Dr. Kumar, who have moved into academia. Yes, Dr. Kumar, I remember we have been students. And then when we moved to become a teacher, our perspective had changed. But the only learning that we brought from there is, okay, something that I did not like as a student, I would possibly not do when I become a teacher. And that is the process of evolution. Friends, it is very interesting in pharmacoeconomics that we understand the perspectives. There are four set of uh, stakeholders. We will talk about that. I, I think I can safely jump over because I want your attention on something that I have uh, colored in blue. Provider, payer, society, and the patient. I'm sorry for that typo. The fourth one is patient, not the payer. It is the cut face thing that uh, bothers you like this. I'm extremely sorry for that uh, typo. So 
let's look at it and understand the perspectives of each of the stakeholders provider yes we are talking about a hospital we are talking about an institution that will provide with the services and for a hospital thanks to the chain of hospitals that is developing what is important is what is the return on investment you walk into a hospital you find it is clean great you find that their people are responsive you find that someone attended to you you find that your lab tests were conducted without you running around the whole hospital building i think you come back with a lot of positive satisfaction feeling and a lot of positive experience but to make that happen someone is spending the money and i want you to understand the perspective of the provider the second is the payer and this is someone if you are hosting a lunch for your friends you know what you feel and in terms of health care yes a payer and i will come to the patient a payer i will talk about covid vaccination in covid vaccination the payer has been government of india now many of us who claim or who ask that government should provide it for free great government is not having any money government is charging taxes from you and me and government is putting back as simple as that so the more i expect free from the government the more i expect to be taxed for younger students this might be harder but those like me who are paying income tax would sure agree with me that the more expectations from the governments yes you are putting yourself into a tighter situation so all the vaccination program when i make a telephone call it says we have done 100 crore vaccination and all that i think across the country you get to hear that message it's a big milestone that our country has achieved but then there has been a cost associated with that who paid the cost i and you as no wise could believe that government of india paid the cost no that is a anomaly people like you and me have paid the cost let's go to the third one which is the societal perspective i think i will only talk about one point here i have a very limited uh, i i have just sufficient number of staff the one that with me but the day when my supporting staff is not here i actually feel hard because i have to run around make a photocopy of the paper i have to run around make a cup of tea for myself i have to go to the water cooler to get my uh, glass of water and this is the societal perspective minded boys and girls ladies and gentlemen every single country every single country give me a moment just one moment you are done about that too i should be excused for that indulgence but somehow every country across the globe makes a huge investment on the health of the mother and the child look around yourself the moment a female is identified to have a pregnancy there is a provision to get registered in the nearest hospital and then from that point onwards at regular interval of times the government spends intensively so that the mother stays healthy and it is a known fact you will all agree with me a healthy mother would give birth to a healthy child exceptions apart and why i say this today and last i think 15 days we are all uh, hearing news the moment you open up your tv you hear about russia and ukraine i will not go into the political side but yes a healthy country a healthy country the healthy 
nationals, the healthy population will contribute to the productivity, will contribute to the defense, will contribute to whatever you can think of. So therefore, not only for you, yes, each one of us is important when we talk about the larger perspective, how do we contribute? And the most important is the patient. Thanks to the mechanism, I work with the Government of India supported institution. So when I am not well, I consult my medical officer, I spend whatever money, my institution, I they put them the paper and they reimburse it to me. So essentially there is no out of pocket expenditure. But then those who do not have this kind of mechanism, you go out, you, so, uh, when I say you, it's not you in the audience, it could be anyone like you and me. It's not hard to find out at the chemist shop, at the retailer shop, someone explaining his or her issues. And it's a very common sight for me when I go in the evenings and they explain, okay, there's a runny nose, a little feverish feeling and this and this. And the retailer would give you something, maybe three tablets, retailer would give you a couple of advices, don't take cold drinks, don't take uh, curd and all things. Now that is an out of pocket expense. The interesting thing about patient behavior is that our demand is inversely proportional to the out of pocket expenses. If I know it is coming free, I need to. If I know it is it has a cost, I would weigh out, do I need it? As simple as that. So friends, quick recap. We have talked about providers. We have talked about payer. We have talked about society and we have talked about the patient. These are the four pillars under which the entire healthcare mechanisms operates. We'll move further. This is the main gate and I'm sure Dr. Kumar would feel nostalgic, which is perfectly acceptable, Dr. Kumar. The entrance of the institution where I work and last two years, I have not been able to travel, but when I have been able to travel, it has been interesting for me to find Dr. Anil that students from the VFAM class would often ask, sir, can I come to Naipur? Can I visit Naipur? The answer is a big yes. Naipur is not a closed institution, though in the picture you may not be able to see the main gates, but Dr. Kumar would, uh, is one person in the audience, I can say with confidence he would agree. You are all free to visit Naipur. If someone needs to contact, the right offices and this is the institution. I always take pride because I have an opportunity to work here and people like Dr. Kumar, I am happy that this institution has produced accomplished people like Dr. Envyas Kumar, right thing. Let's move further. We talked about the cost, we talked about spending. Do we want desired outcomes? I think the answer is yes. I want your specific attention on point number two and three. I want, I imagine that if I take paracetamol tablet 500 milligram, in the next 45 minutes of time, I will have sweating and my elevated body temperature will go down. It would come close to normal. And when I take amoxicillin, I expect that there would be some diarrhea episodes. I will not get into the distinction between what is an ADR and what is a side effect, but that is where when I tell people whom I know that we should avoid taking medicines, I normally get a big opposition. Why should we not take medicines? Friends, our body is built in such a manner. It has self-contained mechanisms and I would urge you not to take a pill for damn any illness that you believe moves around. This is something that typically would have been the first slide. And I would want your attention on the black, which is the point number two. I, in some different context, I have been seeing the population of our country 
in 1951, and I made a comparison right up to 2021, that was last year. We have grown enormously. Today, we stand at 138 crores. And Dr. Kumar, you will agree with me that when it comes to resources in a healthcare setting, population is increasing, but the resources are not increasing in a proportionate manner. And that is where the whole judgment dilemma comes in. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, our belief that if it is expensive, it is going to be better. I think you need to have a rethinking on that fact. I started my discussion saying, if it is expensive, if it is going to be good, you need to have a rethink. And you also need to realize, do you always want to have a prescription with five tablets written there? And I can fairly say with confidence, each one of us in our houses have a medicine box. We have multiple things, but each one of us also have medicine box. I am happy to share with you, ladies and gentlemen, our team, the group with uh, which I work, they had organized, this was in December, three months back, they had organized a drive and they went out to each household in this campus and they collected the expired medicines in many households, they did not know how to identify what is an expired medicine. We only tried to create a canvas where expired medicines are not available in the home. You might ask that, sir, what Dr. Tiwari, how, what did you do with that? Thanks to our collaboration with the hospitals, we have mechanisms and every hospital has mechanisms to dispose the medicines in a manner matching it's a uh, disposal. So we collected the medicines and I'm very happy. I need to congratulate my team here. They, have, they are self-driven people. And uh, yes, they deserve this element of praise at this point. So the simple point when we think of pharmacoeconomics, you cannot think of going to the hospital without having a bundle of uh, money in your pocket or a credit card or a debit card in your pocket. Healthcare has a cost. Every single intervention has a consequence. It could be a positive or it could also be a negative consequence. None of us want to get into the undesired consequences. We don't want to see the side effects, but they are part of the therapy. And the whole discussion that I thought will be moving around is the fact that pharmacoeconomics gives you methods, gives you objective analysis of how to allocate, how to decide, how to choose. This much will go for this, this much will go for this. And that is the whole subject around, which in the last 20 years, ladies and gentlemen, this subject has grown like anything. And many of you are aware that in our country, in the last 10 years time, it is growing exponentially. We need people who understand these concepts like this, like their palm, and contribute to the healthcare systems of our own country. I'll come to that later, I suppose. So simple, putting it into a graphic, you have a healthcare mechanism, you have four different uh, perspectives, you have four different uh, stakeholders. Always there will be a cost that is on the left hand side of the screen and there will be always outcomes which could be desired or which could be undesired. Something I, I have loved and I actually sometimes feel that I should have been more careful in my first year BFARM class because I would have understood anatomy and physiology in much better manner. We all take all the subjects that go. And therefore, pharmacists are custodians of medicines, yes, formulator and everything that goes for safe and 
effective therapies. They are very well placed, I would say. And thank you, Department of Pharmacy Practice of uh, Sri Vishnu College of Pharmacy for organizing this. Yes, because of their capabilities, pharmacists are the most right people to advise anyone on safe use of medicine. At the same time, they also provide essential services. I'm sure many of you know that when the government of India launched the vaccination program, COVID-19 vaccination program, many pharmacists were pressed into service because they did not have enough vaccinators. I'm aware some of the students who have studied and they are working as practicing pharmacists, they were pressed into service. And that is exactly your contribution to the nation. And that is where I say essential clinical services. Well, interesting thing, it's almost 90 years since pharmacy education was started in our country in the year 1932 at the prestigious Banaras Hindi University. I recall Pandit Madan Mohan Malvi, who established the university. And in 1932, Dr. Emil Shroff was the person who established this department. We are 90 years old. We are strong. We are known as the pharmacy of the world. But we still find news items, deaths taking place due to overdose deaths taking place due to A, B, and C, which are avoidable. So friends, my take away from here, don't try to do different things. Do the things differently. Way to go. This is something, Dr. Kumar, which could go again for a couple of hours, but what I chose is I have quick put it into one slide and Ladies and gentlemen, it is not going to take time. I'm not going deeper beyond this because that itself is a big subject. And I'm sure Anil, uh, Dr. Anil, you teach these subjects. Four different types of tests. Oh, I want your attention on the left side. Cost minimization, cost benefit, cost effectiveness, and cost utility. You could wonder why you have four different types of analysis. I'll only give one simple single line answer. Yeah, as a patient, I don't want to spend too much. For me, what is important is I was want something which is minimum price. And therefore, I say, remember the blind men and the elephant example, the perspective is important. Second column, the cost, it will always be money. The outcomes will differ. But for today, forgive me and don't feel disappointed. I said in the beginning, I'm not getting deeper into it. So you could be wondering then what is that which Prasad you are going to be talking about. What I have chosen is to pick up some real time scenarios. It is nothing rocket science. It is around you. Let's look at it. And I think, yeah, even before going to a real time scenario, I don't have to say now that we have the International Society of Pharmacoeconomics and Outcome Research. It's a nonprofit body and it has a huge network across the globe. And the, in India, there are multiple student chapters, so vibrant. In India, again, the national chapter was established almost 10 years back. So just for sake of information, this is the real time example that I was wanting to you. And trust me, I should take another 10 minutes of time to wrap it up. I have tried to pick up three different uh, disease situations. I've tried to pick up drugs which are commonly used, pick out the dose, pick out what could be the frequency and calculate what could be the number of tablets required. Unlike many of you think, I did not calculate the average cost or the average price. I'm not getting into what is price and what is cost. At whatever point of time this analysis was done, Dr. Kumar, you would see that diclofenac sodium 50 milligram 
the minimum price is 25 rupees for 14 days and the maximum price is 94 rupees there is a four fold difference i can say that same thing for even paracetamol and this is happening around us because when we look at a strip we look at the batch number we look at the expiry date we don't bother about the prices here I want to connect with the point of affordability. Someone who is a daily wage earner may not be able to spend a hundred rupees treatment and he or she may choose to take the one that I have printed, put in red color, last but one column is the minimum price. I took one more situation that was peptic ulcer. On the first column, you have all the proton pump inhibitors that you can imagine. Again, last but one column, let's have a look. I want your specific attention on the third one, pantoprazole. The minimum price is 21 rupees. The maximum price is 120 rupees, a six time difference. Don't be surprised. There are examples where you have a 20 times differential between the minimum price and the maximum price. And I can say, any one of us who is paying from our pockets will have a hard decision to take what to buy. We convince ourselves that, okay, this is also omeprazole IP. This is also omeprazole IP. So let me take the one which is 32 rupees for the complete requirement. Why should I be spending that? And that is where we come into picture. We become relevant. A third one that I picked up is GRD and again, interesting, Samitidine did not have any difference. These examples are only to illustrate the variation. And when I talk to my students, postgraduates, they have often suggested me to come up with the average price. Perfectly nice from their perspective. But I am aware that when I calculate the average price, the lower prices and the higher prices that now you see for famotidine, which is not as often prescribed, again, a five times differential, it goes out. So we are relevant when it comes to selection of drugs, we are relevant as pharmacists when it comes to dispensing and not only dispensing, we are relevant when it comes to which brand to buy. I think these three examples wrap up what I, all I wanted to talk to you. And in conclusion, I tried to bring up three points. I would say pharmacoeconomics and outcome research. Yes, it does enhance the quality of clinical practice because it has an objective method to evaluate the interventions and those interventions enhance the probability of meeting the desired outcomes. I know I could have taken time and talked about the insurance, health insurance sector, but then again, I know for this day, that would be too much to digest. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your patience. We need to have knowledge, which our colleges provide, we need to have the skills and at the end, at the bottom of it, the largest base as pharmacy practice students or teachers, we need to have the wisdom to apply this knowledge and skills in real time situations. I appreciate your patience throughout and Thank you for giving me this opportunity, Sri Vishnu College of Pharmacy and the Department of Pharmacy Practice. I will be very much happy to answer any questions which I know the answers of. And over to you, Dr. Anil Kumar and Dr. Uh, yeah, Dr. NBS. Thank you, Dr. Saf. Uh, nice presentation. I'm so happy I listened to the whole presentation. I was with you. I appreciate your uh, point. There are a couple of points in the chat box. The session is open for discussion. 
I ask the students to interact with Dr. Pramil Tiwari. Sir, Dr. Sir, excuse me, I, I'll move on. Sure. Uh, Absolutely fine. I have a class now. Exactly. No, no, no. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I appreciate your presence all along, but that was not needed. I was perfectly fine. No, pleasure is mine. Pleasure is mine. Thank you. No. And we'll, we'll, we'll be in touch again in the evening. Yeah. Re rest assured on that, please. I'm just trying to read uh, Satya Soni, this girl. Yeah, good morning. Um, no. The session is open for discussion. I asked the students to interact with Dr. Pramil Tiwari. See, putting up messages thanking me or uh, congratulating me it doesn't help me. And it doesn't help you either. Right? Many of us, we are, we are students, we do not ask questions because we believe that it is stupid to be asking the question. And Dr. Anil, you would know no single question is stupid. When you walk out of the hall, you need to know answers to the most stupid thing that is coming to your mind. And that is the whole process, the purpose of being in a college. Otherwise, you could have picked up your books and the way you have survived in the last two years. I shall be very happy to... Anyway. Sir, uh, there are a few questions in the YouTube live session, sir. Uh, please go I ahead. Guess, I don't uh, have... I have not... I'm not accessing the YouTube, but please go ahead. Uh, one question is, sir, uh, they're asking if ethical committee approvals are required for economic studies. No. The answer is no. So, and, uh, one more question is, uh, any specific guidelines we should follow when we are doing economical evaluations there? Do we have okay. something to refer to? Okay. I think uh, that's a very relevant point. Uh, and uh, I would only like to add to the audience. Uh, when we walk out of pharmacy domain and when we try to see what is happening in the healthcare, I'm sure many of you have come across something which is standard treatment guidelines or clinical practice guidelines. There are, every country has their own agencies and in the United Kingdom, there is something called NICE, National Institute of Clinical Excellence. In our country, there is an agency called DSPRUD, it's a non-governmental agency, but supported by very talented people. It should not appear to be marketing DSPIRUD. I have been working with them for some time. So the guidelines that we are talking, Dr. Anil Kumar, every country would have guidelines. And the last, if the researcher believes that he or she does not have the right guidelines, World Health Organization is always there as a repository. Right? Yeah. Thank I you. hope I have been able to answer that. So, so one more question is, uh, they're asking if we can consider safety while uh, we are evaluating pharmacoeconomics. It has to be there. Dr. Anil Kumar, no one would uh, realize it better than you and even the person who had asked this question, very relevant. See what we want. We want therapies which are effective, and we want therapies which are safe. I would not take a single tablet, damn effective, but if it is unsafe, I will not take it. And I'm sure every, anyone, I mean, sitting in the audience and uh, listening to it. So we cannot look, it is less like the head and tail in a coin. When we look, whenever we talk about a medicine, we need to look at the effectiveness and we also need to look at the safety. I think this is as simple as that. I hope I have been able to answer. I'm not having access to that. So I'm just responding to what you are sharing. No problem. Yeah. yeah. So one more question is impact. Sure. In Indian scenario, sir, present scenario, uh, can we include economics in decision making? They're asking, sir. Okay. I think the very theme of the whole webinar, Dr. Anil, yes. translating research into practice, right. it connects exactly with the question that has been put up. Now, to be specific about this answer, in the best of my knowledge, whatever is happening in pharmacoeconomics in the country now, 
right? I, I will also say it is in the stage of infancy. I want you to remember, I'm sure uh, Dr. Anil possibly you were not born, but earliest days in 75, when the computer science was a new discipline, people in the mathematics domain, they were asked to get into computer science because some of them wanted to go further, right? And across the country, when pharmacy practice schools were to be established and the courses were to be established, we did not have anyone who had studied pharmacy practice. So we have brought in pharmacology people in many schools, isn't it? Yes, I would not be able to comment, but thankfully in the last 10 years, there are multiple publications, multiple publications on India specific scenarios. The whole strength lies in the fact how well the analysis has been done. And that is where I had chosen in the last part of my last 10 minutes of my discussion, I had chosen to do some real time things. So it is not that the way we work in a pharmacology lab and we say this receptor and that receptor, it's not that. As long as it is done keeping into the real time situations, I'm very much convinced those decisions will definitely move to the practice. And I think that is the whole uh, purpose. The day we start working on to that, we don't have to run after the doctors. It will be the other way. The doctors will start seeking the support of Dr. Anil Kumar or for that sake, anyone. Right? Yeah. I guess I've been able to answer that. So, uh, one more thing is, sir, uh, when we try to select one particular method from pharmacogenics. How do we choose actually? So. Okay. Uh, I would only say, we, I talked about four stakeholders. Okay. Right. I'll put it very simple. I can see a screen where the seminar hall of SVCP, yes. right? Yes. And uh, I do not know the person, but uh, I, it's good to see students in the hall. And after a long time, it's something like that. When you want to have something, students, you say that, okay, I want these shoes. I want a new bat, let us say, to the boys. Your parents, your dad thinks you are doing a useless expenditure. Your current bat is good enough. And you have disagreement, right? Now there are two perspectives. One is your perspective where you're insisting that this bat does not hit so well. Your dad looks at it and he says, okay, dad or anyone for that second elder brother, he says, hey, you have a bat, it is not broken. To sum it, Dr. Anil Kumar, we need to consider which stakeholder we are looking at. So I would only say, we talked about four different stakeholders provider, payer, society, and the patient, right? When we think of which method to adopt, see a hospital will, many of us will believe hospital will want to do a cost minimization. No, hospital wants that once a patient is just discharged, the patient does not come back to the hospital with the same problem in one week time. If the patient comes back, I will give you an example, Dr. Anil Kumar, give me a two minutes time. I'll give you an example of uh, severe bronchial asthma. Yeah, I have someone who is having some severe bronchial asthma. I take him to the emergency department. The doctors there handle the whole thing and I bring the person back. And if after three days, the person again has a severe attack, I have to go to the same hospital? No, I can tell you, my friends who I work with, collaborators, they say no. So we make sure that the patient goes out, and this is the doctor's work, the patient goes out with a long-term solution. And a long-term solution, Dr. Anil, cannot come with the cost minimization. You and me, when we want to buy something, we said, okay, why to spend a 50 rupees? I am getting it for 40 rupees here. We all do that in our day-to-day -day things. Isn't it? So the choice of method 
shall depend which stakeholder you are like. So Anil Kumar or Pramil Tiwari cannot be four persons. But once I am into the frame of a patient, next time say some, some hospital comes to a Dr. Anil Kumar and says, Dr. Anil Kumar, will you be able to this, do this kind of pharmacoeconomic analysis for us? I'm sure they will not expect you to do a cost minimization. They will ask you to expect a cost effectiveness analysis. Isn't it? I, I think it is that simple. I deliberately, I have not gone deeper into that. So that would appear big rocket science and I can understand the heterogeneity in the different levels of the classes. So that's perfectly fine. There are some points on the chat box. Yeah, anything else there? Methodology. Same, sir. Already you have answered, sir. They're asking methodology. So you have given uh, different guidelines, sir. Yeah. Same course. Uh, this is uh, Sirisha, right? right? Yes, Sirisha. There are standard guidelines, there are standard methods. The reason is, Sirisha, you do an analysis, Anil sir does an analysis, Sajida ma'am does an analysis, Neha does an analysis, Satya Soni, they're all people on whom I can see on my screen. If we all do this analysis according to our thinking, we will have five different results. Do we want five different results for the same problem? The answer is no. The answer is no. Therefore, there are standardized methods. So Anil sir wants to do it, Sajida ma'am wants to do it, Neha ma'am wants to do it, Satya Soni ma'am wants to do it, Pramiti Vare wants to do it. Okay. There are standard methods. I can make something and I think these are only abbreviations. You should. What is the methodology that needs to be followed? Yeah. Sirsha, I hope I have one. Is there a standard procedure? Yes, there are standard procedures. And you only need to get into published study first to see how did they do that. I think instead of going for which method to adopt, if you are a uh, fresher into this domain, possibly you can get into a published study, try to understand what they have done and then go backwards. I hope uh, Sirisha, I have been able to answer your point. This is in the chat box. Anything else there? No, I don't see anything else on the chat box. Thank you so much, sir. Oh, thank you, Sirisha. Thank you. I'm happy my answer could reach you. Thank you, Dr. Anil Kumar. And uh, thank you, boys and girls. We pin a lot of hopes with the future, and the future is sitting in the seminar hall of SVCP. You have, I am aware of uh, Dr. Kumar's. I have been in touch with him. I got to know Dr. Anil Kumar, sir. So, sky is the limit. Don't confine yourself that this is not my domain. Walk out. And Anil, I think you will agree with me. Yes. Uh, pharmacy students, they carry a stigma that, sir, we are poor in mathematics. Come on. I have seen in my experience here, my boys and girls, not because they're my boys and girls, sniper boy, I mean, postgraduates, doing exceptional level of statistical analysis. Statistics cannot be done without a grip on the mathematics. So if the sky is the limit, and I would uh, imagine that you do not confine yourself to anything, explore out. And in between somewhere I think, do the things differently. Don't do different things, right? Anil sir, over to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, the uh, session was very lively and, uh, with a lot of examples, sir. Thank you so much, sir. It's I, very relevant and uh, new topic for staff also, sir. Most no, of it's, staff it's, not, it's not. One morning you are new to that, I know. But then again, because I was new to that, 
but now my our people are doing so they come and i learn from them every week every day i mean everything that come so we work together congratulations dr anil kumar and the department of pharmacy practice team at uh, shri vishnu college of pharmacy it has always been a pleasure to come back to svcp events and i am happy i got this morning today right have a great time my best wishes to each one of you and thank you dr anil kumar thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much sir thank you i appreciate your patience and yeah wish you all the best not only to the students of pharmacy practice department but to all the students of uh, shri vishnu college of pharmacy thank you sir thank you sir we feel so glad to have an extraordinary person like you sir and i thank everyone for spending your time in gaining knowledge and uh, feedback links will be provided in the youtube link and and uh, the links for tomorrow session will be provided in your respective groups thank you thank you sir thank this you is so satya soni no who is this uh, yeah what's your name satya soni sir satya soni satya soni beta i am an absolutely ordinary person absolutely ordinary person and what i want not only satya soni what i want every boy and every girl out there every young teacher or not so young teacher you can do it have that confidence you have the best of the people in the country and there is absolutely nothing extraordinary about me except for the fact that i am an old man that is the only difference thank you it has been a pleasure to be with you and all the best uh, dr anil kumar very well organized and i appreciate uh, this opportunity of being with you at svcp thank you thank you so much sir thank you sir thanks thank you sir